could have said amen to that. Father, I do believe your people are some of the most beautiful people in the world. Oh, you're catching on. Father, I thank you, Lord. God, I bless you. And Father, I ask you, Lord, that you would say what you desire to say this morning. God, as you give me the message, God, I give it back to you. And God, you empower it. Father, you saturate it in the presence of God. And Lord, I thank you for it. Amen and amen. It's good to see you today. I want to talk to you today about hope. Hope. And what you do with hope. Because I don't care who you are, there is something you're longing for. There is something, there is something that you long for God to do in your life right now. I guarantee you everyone in here has something that they are longing for God to do in their life. So I want you to focus on that right now. Focus on what is the main thing that you feel like you want to see God do something in your life. Something that you cannot do on your own. It is impossible to do it on your own. But it's not impossible with God. And you know that if it ever happens, it has to be God doing it. There is a longing in our soul for hope. You know, that initial hope is that, you know, in going into the kingdom of God when we die. But before that happens, we have a hope of God meeting our needs and our longings and our desires right here. Right? Because we have to live in this world. And we have to do our best for God in this world. And so, during that time, we have to... We, there's things that we long for God to do for us. To help us be the best that we can be for Him. Have you got it in your mind? I guarantee you, every, everyone has something. So what are you longing for? What are you facing right now? What are you facing that you need some hope in? Something that you need God for? You know, the Bible says that hope that is seen is not hope. If you've seen the answer to your prayer, it's not hope anymore. Hope has not happened yet. You're hoping for something that has not taken place yet. And we're going to go all the way down through this and we're going to get to how do we respond to hope. But if you can see it, it's not hope. You know, I talk to people all the time and they, you know, they'll maybe discuss their problems and, and I can see it. It's, a, it's sort of a general response. It may be a gloom outlook, and they say, well, I hope things are going to get better. You know, I'm hoping that somehow God will have mercy on my situation. Everybody can have hope, but not according to the biblical pattern. Because when people come to you like that, it is in discouragement, it is in depression, it is in, it, it is in anti what God is talking about in relation to hope. Jeremiah 29, 11. All right, Jan where did Janet go? All right. For some reason, I made sure I hit the right button. All right, if you can't get it, Ken, that's fine. There you go. All right, Jeremiah 29 11. All of us have seen that scripture. God says, for I know the plans that I have for you. You hear that? I know, God says, I know the plan that I have for you. 
Are you listening? God said, I know the plans that I have for you. It is plans for welfare and not for what? Not for what? Not for what? Say it louder, Mary. Not for evil. All right. Because I know she's facing some things. Oh, did I walk off the screen? Oh, come on, girls. You've got to have a wide screen for me. All right. Listen. The things that are happening in your life, God said, I have a plan for you. And it's not for evil. But when we're in the middle of it, we feel like it's what? What do we feel like it is? It's what? Yeah, it's calamity, it's evil, it's destructive. But what you you know, but it's not what God has. God says, I know the plans I have for you. I know the plans that I have for that thing that you're longing for. And he says, they're plans for your welfare. And it is not for evil. Say, say not for evil. God's plan for you is not for evil. And he says that, he says that plan is to give you a what? A what? A future and a what? Hope. God always has hope for his people. And in the situation that you're in, I believe God wants to give you hope. A hope that only comes from Him. And there's another scripture, I don't have it up there. It says that hope deferred makes the heart sick. When that hope just keeps going on and on and on, maybe for years and years or whatever, it can make, I mean, it's sickening almost. That's what the scripture says. But I see so many times that people will say, you know, maybe I just need to face the facts live with it. All right, am I talking to anybody? Maybe I just need to face the facts and live with it. Hope. Hope. Let's look at another scripture. You know what? I don't know whether this thing got a dead battery or they don't like my fingers. I did the I did the thing to the right. Is that wrong? I got to do that one. That's the one on the right. Huh? Look right there. Is it hanging on the thing right? It might be my fault. What What am I doing wrong? Now I went forward three or four slides. Well. All right. Go back. Go back to slide number three, if you would, Janet. Oh, you know what? I think I could do better without this thing. All right, I'm going. All right, forget that. Ephesians one eight sixteen says, "It says that God. It says that we are no, we are to know what hope is." I think most people really don't know what hope is. Are you with me? I don't. The biblical hope, I think very few people understand what it is. Because hope, you, you would, people wouldn't be walking around, oh, I hope somehow this is going on. I hope somehow. Listen, that is, that is not the biblical hope. But that is the way we feel many times. All right, let's go to the second thing. So it won't mean. All right, I'm off the hook. All right, first thing is we have a longing for hope. Just a longing for hope. Every one of us have a longing for hope in our life. The second thing is that hope has to come from God. Are you listening? There's three things I'm going to tell you. The first thing is we have a longing for hope. second thing is that that hope needs to come from God. All right, First, First Timothy 4.10, and it's not on the screen. It says, our hope is set on the living God. 
What is your hope set on today? You know, as far, listen, as far as you getting out of the problem you're in or out of, you know, the problem getting fixed, what is your hope on? What is your hope on? Is it on the circumstances surrounding the problem? You see, we, when God gives us hope, He wants us to see that our hope comes from Him. There is really no hope outside of God. Our hope has to come from God. And if we're looking at fleshly things to try to fix the problem... That's not what the Scripture's talking about. Colossians 1.27, and that's not on the screen either. Listen, the Scripture says that Christ in us is what? The hope of glory. God has put hope inside of us. Are you listening? God has put hope inside of you. Christ in Mary... Christ inside of you. Are you listening? Christ inside of you is the hope of glory. And see, sometimes we're looking for the answer to the problem way out here. Because all we see is the problem. And, and But you see, the, all right, you got to watch that wide screen. I'm going to pick on Mary, okay? All right, listen. I know, Don. They hate me back here, when I, back there when I do that. Listen, the things that we face, listen, the things that she, she can look all the way around at the circumstances and how bad the circumstances, listen, how bad the circumstances, how bad the circumstances are, how bad we can focus on how bad this situation is. Or, Mary, you got to slide down here. Slide. <laughs> they ain't going to like me going over there. But listen, but listen, the answer to her issue and the answer to all of our is Christ inside of her is her hope. Do you hear me? Your hope is Christ inside of you. And when you're looking out here for the answer or for the circumstances to change, you're missing the whole point. Christ, and thank you for letting me pick on you, Christ inside of her is her hope. Christ inside of you is the hope of glory. Now, you know, even the hope that I get, I mean, Christ inside of me, uh, a lot of times that hope will come through God's Word, the Bible. You know, sometimes we just see something in the Bible, we just know it's a promise from God. The ones that I really like is when I, when I hear something from God. I told Queen yesterday, I said, Queen, <laughs> I don't hardly do anything without God speaking to me on it. Nothing. Because he is my hope, and he is inside of me. Are you with me? Now, Janet, are we back up? All right. Is that slide number four? Yeah, that's the one I want. Well, I need you to skip down to that slide anyway. All right, you know what? I'm just going to call out numbers to you. That's okay. It may like your finger better than mine. All right, I'll just say change. All right, Romans 15, 13. Look at this. It says, may the God of what? Hope. May the God of what? Hope. May the God of what? Hope. Hope. Fill you with all joy. You don't listen, when you're in the middle of crap, you don't feel very joyful, do you? No. Do you? No. It says, but may the God of hope fill you with what? Joy. joy. And peace Amen. in believing. So that by listen, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Now listen to this. I looked up that word abound, different translations. It says that it exists in large numbers and amounts. Amen. Large Are you listening to me? 
if you want a big hope, if you want the abundance of hope, the abundance, it says it only comes by the power of the Holy Spirit. It is by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may abound in the abundance of hope. It is only by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I know sometimes, you know, people look at the Holy Spirit. I know Ken's been talking about it. And, uh, you know, sometimes you just can't figure that thing out. And so what you do is you sort of just take, take, take a back seat. You know, maybe I'm just not meant to figure this out. Find that in the Bible. Yeah, she said, dang it. <laughs> Listen, if you need a lot of hope, yeah, she's your daughter, isn't she? <laughs> listen, if you, listen, if you want, listen. If you want to abound in hope, that word abound is abundant. You need abundant hope. I mean abundant hope. If you need abundant hope, it says it only comes by the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, Christ inside of you is your hope. And we're talking about the power of the Holy Spirit. It's just that Christ inside of you, he's just exploding with Anything you need. Anything you need. And you see, it's just a matter of trusting God. You're trusting the person inside of you. Are you with me? You're trusting that person that is living inside of you to do everything he wants to do through you. Hebrews 6.19. This, this is not a change. It says that hope is the anchor for the soul. You see, when you're going through, and just pardon the way I say this, but when you're going through hell, it says that hope will anchor your soul. When you feel like you're being torn apart in every direction, and your circumstances are getting out of control, hope will anchor your soul. And that's in Hebrews 6.19. If you want to look it up. I mean, not right now, but if you want to make a note of it. Now, we have a longing for hope, and I believe every person in here has something that they're hoping for God to do. Everybody. Second thing is, that hope comes from God. If you want the right kind of hope, it comes from God. It comes from God. Now, third thing, and this is probably the most important part of it all. God gives hope to the whole world. All right? I remember even back to the classes we talked about, you know, you know, God extended his grace to the whole world. We, his hope too. I mean, his hope is tied to that. God has extended his hope to the whole world. But it is only those who respond to it are really going to receive the benefit and the blessing. All right, now let's, let's change to... Remember, we're going, we're going to the third thing, and it's our response to hope, to the hope that God has given. And our response to it is going to be faith. All right, now, this is, uh, this is Isaiah 38. All right, you know, blank, blank it for just a minute so I can talk to him. Oh, you probably can't do that, can you? All right, cool. I didn't know how to do it, so it's good. Can do Janet can do all things through Christ Jesus. All right, now. All right, now. The scripture is going to go through a story of a very famous king in Israel. In fact, he was, he was one of the good kings. 
He was really one of the best. Are you with me? He's not a bad guy at all. He is one of the he was one of the better kings and you know back in the old days before Israel got shoved off into another country there were not very many good kings but Hezekiah was one of them Hezekiah was one of the good guys he was one of the guys who believed in the Lord God Almighty and and several things began began to happen to him at one time if you read the context of this you'll see that the Assyrian army was trying to come up and trying to destroy him number one I mean that would be enough you see a massive army outside your door and they're coming to destroy you and then on top of all that Hezekiah got sick bad and maybe it was the army that made him sick I don't know you know stress can make you sick You got a free one there. Stress will make you sick. Stress will make you sick. And so Hezekiah was facing a situation. He had a massive army outside, but then inside his body he was getting sick. All right, now, I want you to see what happened. All right, Janet, let's go back to the unblock. All right, you got to be ready for me. All right. Isaiah was the prophet. And Isaiah went to Hezekiah and said, he said, set your house in order for you shall what? Die. He can't, actually those three dots, in that three dots it says, Isaiah came to him and said, thus saith the Lord. He came to him with a word from God. I should have kept that in there. He came to, he came to Hezekiah and he said, thus saith the Lord. Set your house in order, you're going to die. You know, that right there would have probably been enough. I mean, most of us, we'd been preparing for our funeral. To have a major prophet of God come up and say, boy, you're going to die. You're not only sick, you're going to die. All right, now listen, Hezekiah is facing probably one of the worst situations in his life. He's facing sickness, he's facing an army, now he's facing sickness, and then he's facing the prophet of God, the the respected prophet of God coming to him and saying, you're going to die. God says you're going to die. That's what he said. God said you're going to die. You can look up the full story here. Isaiah 38. All right, now. Look at number two. Then, look at that, number two, you see that? It's sort of small print. Then what happened? Then Hezekiah looked at all of his problems. Then Hezekiah looked at the armies. Then Hezekiah looked at his sickness. Then Hezekiah looked at the fact that the prophet of God said you're going to die. No, is that what he did? No. No. It says, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall. He didn't want to see anything. He turned his face to the wall. When he he was at his most desperate time in his life, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall, and he did what? He prayed. And said in verse 3, Please, O Lord, Remember, he's blocking out all the problems. He's not, I mean, the boy's going to die. God's already said you're going to die. He, the problems do not matter if you're dead. And so he went the only place he could go. He tur- Don't follow me. I'm going to walk off the screen, so you better listen. You got to be fast. Listen, Hezekiah took and he turned his face to the wall. He didn't want to see the problems. He didn't want to see the circumstances. He turned his face to the wall and he began to pray. And he said, and it says, he said, please, O Lord. And there's a few, I didn't want to put everything. 
birthday. You can go back and read it all yourself. And Hezekiah did what? He wept bitterly. You know, I'm going to die. He started weeping. And then in verse 4, then the, the word of the Lord came back to who? I, you, see, you see that? Understand the problem did not change. Listen, the only thing that changed was what was inside of Hezekiah. That's all that changed. It says that he wept bitter. Then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah who came and told him he was going to die. Isaiah just said, Thus says the Lord, you're going to die, boy. But God, listen, when God, listen, when God saw Hezekiah's response, I want you to listen to me. When God saw Hezekiah's response to the problems, it says, he told Isaiah, he said, go back and you tell Hezekiah. Verse 4. Go and say to Hezekiah, thus saith the Lord, I have heard your what? I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Behold, I will add 15 years to your life. You see, follow me down. What, what, listen, what, what Hezekiah had to do is he had to get his eyes off the problem and he had to get his eyes on God. Are you with me? He had to get his eyes off the problem and he had to put his eyes upon God. Christ inside of you is your hope. Christ inside of you is your hope. And what we do most of the time, we focus on the problem. We focus on the problem. We, you know, God, the problem, Lord, the problem. And is the problem bad? Yes, yeah, probably pretty bad. But the problem is not our hope. Christ inside of you is your hope. God, listen, God changed the outcome of Hezekiah, even his death because of his response. It's because of how he responded to hope. All right, another thing about Isaiah, I want you to listen to this. Even though the prophet came to him and said, you're going to die, understand. All right, listen. Isaiah refused to accept the outcome of his circumstances. Are you with me? He refused to accept them. He refused to look at them. He refused to accept them. And he still turned his heart back to Christ. All right, let's go to Romans. Uh, we got a bunch of them. Romans 4.18. All right, now we're going to switch over to Abraham. Now, most of you know the story of Abraham. Abraham was one of the most godly men probably in the world. And I was telling somebody the other day, I don't even know who it was. Um, I said, you have to understand that Abraham, okay, you listening to me? Abraham, every Jew that is in the world today, every single Jew who has ever been born, came through Abraham and Isaac. Every one of them, every single Jew that has ever been born came through Abraham and Isaac. Every one of them. Abraham was a very important figure in the time frame, time frame of God. All right, Abraham didn't have, Abraham didn't have a son. At seven... Black that out, please. At 75 years old, Abraham did not have a son. At 75 years old. And God gave him a promise of hope. And he said, son, you're going to have a kid. And at, seven, at 75 years old, would that make you happy? <laughs> ah! 
I can go to you too. <laughs> Would that make you happy at 75? Now, they did live longer back then, but they didn't live that, live that much longer. <laughs> he was still an old guy, okay? And God began to give him hope. And he said, Abraham, you're going to have a kid. He's 75 years old. Well, he was 100 before that kid was born. 100 years old. And any way you do the math, he was still really old. He was still really old. All right, so God told him at 75 he was going to have a kid. All right, and think about it. Can you imagine what that next 25 years was like? God said, I'm sorry, Mary, but you're right here. God said, listen, God told him, he said, listen, you're going to have a kid. All right, the first year goes by, the second year goes by, and he's like, okay, God, where's my, you know, God, come on now, it's been two years. Three years, I don't know quite how, quite how many years it is, and then, then Sarah says, okay, listen, I got a pretty little girl here, and she's my servant. Maybe that's what God means, and he tried to, and, and they created an Ishmael. trying to help God with his plan. And so Abraham, you know, after five years, 10 years, 15 years, 25 years, finally the Lord answered his prayer. Finally. All right, now let's look at it. All right. Against all, I mean, you can imagine having a child at 75. It says, against all what? Hope. Against all what? Hope. Against all what? Hope. hope. Abraham, in hope, did what? Believe. Against all hope. There was no way in the natural world that that problem could have been solved. Against all hope. Abraham, in hope, believed, so that he became the father of many, many nations. Look at that last part. Just as what? Just as it had been said to him. Just as it had been said to him. Let's go to the next one. Romans 4.19. This is all right in the same, the same context. Abraham, he did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which is, was as good as dead. Him and Sarah both had gone through, they'd gone through everything. And they, you know, but God said, no, you're going to have a, ch you're gonna have a child. And so even though his body was as good as dead since he was about 100 years old, and when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. Now go back up to the first part. It says he did not what? He did not weaken in his faith. You see, his hope came, Abraham's hope came, and everything around him said, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Can you imagine his friends coming to him? Your wife is 90 years old, boy. She is not going to have a kid. She went through the change a long time ago. Boy, it, she ain't, it ain't going to happen. Do you understand? It's not going to happen. You can imagine his friends coming to him. But it says he did not what? He did not waver. He did not weaken in his faith. Even though his circumstances said different. Let's go to the next part. He was fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Now, what are you facing? I think that was the last one on there. I want to ask you, what are you facing? What are you facing right now? Because I'm telling you, if we look at our circumstances around us, Don, I'm moving to the wall again. If we, listen, if we look at the circumstances around us, it will try to destroy our faith. Our, listen, our, listen, our response to hope. When God gives you hope, there is only one response that we can have to it, and that is faith. 
that is the only thing that is the only thing biblical to do. And so Hezekiah, when Hezekiah was about ready to die, he stopped looking at everything around him and he turned his face to God. Listen, you can look at it any way you want to. God liked what he did. God realized that Hezekiah was trusting him and not a small army against a big army. God was trusting him to fight the sickness that was in his body. Hezekiah was trusting him to overcome death. And when God saw that, and he saw that Hezekiah prayed, when he saw the tears of Hezekiah, God literally changed the outcome after he received the word from God. You know, there's a scripture that says God waits can't remember exactly how it is, but it's like God waits to show his grace and favor to us. And you know why I think that's there? Because God is waiting. I want you to listen to me. God is waiting to see what's really inside of us and who we're really going to trust in. Are we going to just trust and look at the situation around us or are we going to trust in God inside of us. It says that God will wait to bless us. He will wait to do that. And the reason is he is waiting for the right response. And that right response is faith in Christ inside of you. So whatever you're facing today, your response to God is very important. Your response to God. God will give you hope, but he's looking for the response of faith, of really trusting him. Let's stand up. You know what? I did have one more. Go, go to uh, the next one, Janet. Okay, Romans four sixteen. Look at that. And this is in this is in the same context of that scripture with Abraham. It says that is why it depends on faith. You see that? God says that is why it depends on faith, so that the promise may rest on what. Grace. Remember what grace is? Grace is God giving you favor. God giving you favor. And he says that is why it depends on faith. So that God can give you his promise. And it may rest on grace. So what are you facing today? Going back to the very beginning, I told you to think about the thing that you, the most disturbing thing happening in your life right now. Now, I can't do this part for you. I can't do that. I can lay hands on you all day and it ain't going to help. <laughs> you understand? It, I can lay hands on you and speak in tongues for five hours. It would not help. This is something only you can do. It is something only you can do. And it's just a matter of receiving God's hope by faith. And as Hezekiah did, he turned his face to the wall and he stopped looking at all the problems and he looked at God inside of him. You see, God knows when you're really trusting him. You know, we can say the right words, we can go through the right motions, but God knows when we really trust And God, listen, and God many times will withhold his, he'll withhold many times blessings because he's waiting for a response, the proper response. Now, I will pray for you here. Just raise your hands up. If you've got something that, oh, I shouldn't say just raise your hands up. If you have an issue that you really need God to help you in, 
Father, I ask you, Lord, that with every single hand that's up, Father, I ask you, Lord, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, God, that you would begin to pour out the power of your Holy Spirit into each heart that's here. And God, I ask you, Father, that you would help every single person here to begin to trust you with the issues. And God, like Abraham, they, would not, they, they wouldn't waver in their faith. God, they wouldn't waver. And Father, like Hezekiah, that we could just turn our face to the wall and just be with God. So Father, I ask you, Lord, that you'd minister to hearts today. God, that you'd minister to each one. God, I ask you to pour out your Holy Spirit into hearts in the name of Jesus. God, that you would pour out your Holy Spirit Father, that you would pour out the abundance of hope. God, the abundance of hope in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for it. Amen. 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 You know, we've said so often, you can't, faith and hope are twins. They work together. You cannot have faith without hope, and you cannot have hope without faith. And what produces hope is what he was came to the very last, is our faith. What is hope? It's the expectancy of the best. You, hope is something good going to happen. Amen? See, I hope my wife was going to marry me when I asked her to. You know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this is... I, I chased this woman until she caught me. Oh, did I? <laughs> but wh- what is an ex- Has anybody ever had anxiety? Have anyone ever had anxiety? Okay, so and hope is expectancy of something good's going to happen. Anxiety is expecting the worst. What produces anxiety? Fear. Fear and anxiety are twins. Faith and hope are twins. So whenever you begin to have hope, faith is at work. Hello? And to make that hope work, well, he just declared the whole message. You know. So I'm praying that we we hold on to hope. That we just keep our, uh, you know, just... Just follow his instructions. Just go back and listen to this word again today. If you if you get an opportunity, you can't do it today. Do it sometime during the week. You know, just you can go on YouTube, you can go on Facebook, and and I guarantee you, when you hear it the second time, that's going to be more revelation. Yes. Amen. And then when you hear it the third time, that's going to be more revelation. Yeah, and hope is the best that the Lord has given us. Amen. Amen. We're hoping for the rapture. Amen. 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 For the soon return of our our Lord. Again, I want to invite you to come out today to uh, the City Armory.